Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Welcome to Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage from the Vault Series. This is a series of interviews we did starting back in 2004, two years before the Musicians Hall of Fame opened to the public. We hope you enjoy it, and if you do, please remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Today's clip is with my good friend and great guitarist, James Burton. You went from like a, a an acoustic, like a Stella or whatever, to a Telecaster yeah, immediately? Yeah, I, I think my first guitar was a Regal, and I went from that to a, to an electric guitar, which my first electric guitar was a Rex, Rick. made by Gretsch. And uh, then as soon as I walked by, I walked by a music store downtown in my hometown, Shreveport, and uh, a music store called JNS Music, and uh, that blonde Telecaster hanging in the window caught my eye and uh, my mother was with me and I, I told I told mother I said this is that's the guitar that's the guitar I've got to have that guitar that's the one I want so I went in checked it out and played it and uh, so we went home and uh, so my dad came home from work and my mother said told him about the guitar so uh, he said well take him down and get that guitar and uh, I still have that guitar today you did really that's great and I recorded Susie Q Hello, Mary Lou. I went through uh, Ricky Nelson with that guitar. Uh, uh, just so many Merle Haggard, so many. Uh, it's, it's it's actually been around the world a few times and on you know, many many sessions. You know that the Paisley guitar is always going to be, no matter if it has your name on it or not. It's still everybody calls that the Burton. Yeah, it's Kelly. got my stamp on it somehow, and uh, yeah, that's a wonderful guitar. I, I really enjoyed playing that guitar. And I still play it once in a while. And, and uh, now you know the, the story on how those guitars came about, how they Fender went down to the local um, um, paint store that sold wallpaper and all that and, and bought out the supplies that they had of that. And when it was gone, it was gone. Mm -hmm. Someone told me they had, they had a gentleman that didn't actually work for the company at the time, but uh, he was the guy that actually put the design together for them. How did you get yours? Well, uh, a guy named Chuck Widener uh, called me. He was a he was a president at that time of Fender, and uh, he called me and he said, uh, "I've got a guitar here. It's got your name on it." And I said, "Oh, really?" He, and I said, "Well," and I was going into Vegas with uh, Elvis at the time. It was in '69, and he said, uh, "Yeah, I've got this guitar, but I'm not going to send it to you. You have, you have to come down and look at it and make that decision." So I went down and looked at it, and man, it was a bit bright for me. I said, no, 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 I, I, that's not me. I can't play that guitar. And he said, oh, yeah, sure, sure, it's yours. It's got your name all over it. And uh, so I took it with me, and I took it to Vegas. It took me about, well, when we opened the show, it took me two weeks into the show to break, break it out and play it on the stage. And I was afraid I was might. You know, no telling what he might say on stage and freak out or something. <laughs> so, but anyway, I took it out and he loved it. He never said anything on stage, but in between shows he called me in and uh, asked me about that guitar. He said, where'd you get that? You know, and I said, well, Fender called me and gave it to me. And, uh, you know, so it took me a while to break it out and play it. He said, no, it's great. Sounds great. Looks great. He well, loved it. Speaking of Elvis, when did you first meet Elvis? You know, actually, I didn't meet Elvis until uh, it was actually 69 because uh, I had a phone call to uh, do the comeback special in 68. But I was doing an album with Jimmy Bowen uh, producing Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was doing that album with Frank Sinatra, and I couldn't, uh, Bowen wouldn't let me out to, to do that. He, because, uh, you know, we had a schedule plan. And, uh, but uh, the very following year, uh, in 69, uh, Elvis called me personally, talked to him for about three hours on the phone, and uh, he asked me about putting a band together and, and uh, op opening uh, Vegas. He got tired of doing movies and just wanted to go play live. Where Did he ever tell you where he became a fan of yours, what it was, or what, what artist, or what song, or whatever it was? You know, pretty much on, uh, on uh, the phone call. Uh, when I answered the phone, he, he actually... Uh, uh, opened up, he said, uh, you know, I watched the Eisenhower show, the TV show, 
to watch me play guitar uh, behind Ricky. You know, Ricky would sing a song, and uh, he said that, that he really enjoyed it. He watched that show every week. Mm -hmm. So, kind of like Chet influenced you. I guess that would be your uh, main influence was Chet. I would say yes, absolutely. And I know every interview I've read about from from um, from Harrison. You know, your name was brought up. Dwayne Eddy was brought up. Um, and, and, um, and Chet, and that was about it. Maybe Scotty, too, you know? Yeah, I think Chet probably influenced uh, uh, probably as many guitarists in the world as anybody. As a matter of fact, I can't, I, I probably can't think of anybody, you know, Les Paul and, and Merle Travis, and, and, uh, and I'm very honored that, you know, that I, had that position to, to do that, you know, to be able to influence other guitar players. And, and <clears throat> it's, it's really an honor. I, I just love my work. I love my music. And it's, it's just a, one of those things, you know, that um, I guess I'll just play my instrument till, uh, till the end of time, and that's what I plan to do.